Hello everyone, my name is Boaz Lelehina. I'm a software engineer and GRE trainer here at the Kenya Lift program. And for this video, we're going to be going through the overview of the GRE quant section, the types of questions and the structures of questions you will be experiencing when you sit for your exam. Let's get started. All right, so the quantitative reasoning uh, section of the GRE, what does it assess? What is it going to be testing you? The first thing you're going to be tested on would be your mathematical skills. Are you able Are you able to solve mathematical questions in an efficient and very quick way and also being very accurate with it? So basic mathematical skills are very important for the quant section. The second thing will be understanding of elementary mathematical concepts. So maybe questions like, uh, do you know what are the prime numbers, right? Do you know prime numbers? How to work on algebraic equations? How to solve algebraic equations? Algebraic equations, right? So are you able to very efficiently and very quickly understand the different concepts that are being tested? Another thing that is going to be assessed is your ability to reason quantitatively quantitatively and to model and solve problems. So if you're given a very long question, are you able to break down those long sentences and form an equation that you're able to solve in a mathematical manner, right? So remember we said that uh, GRE has two sections for quant, two sections. So section one here, section one is going to be 12 questions. And then these, will earn you 21, uh, it's going to take you 21 minutes to do. And then section two here, also 15 questions. And then this one will be given 26 minutes to solve. Both of these ones will going to give you 170 marks total if you get all the questions right, all right? But also remember, we mentioned in our introduction to GRE, that whenever you're, you're, you're doing this first section here, you have to score very high in order to get a very hard second section. So if you get a harder second section, then your score is going to be somewhere around 155, 156, even 160. So work hard to score very well in section one. If you're able to score very well in section one, then section two is going to be a little bit harder and this will earn you better marks. All right, so let's go over some of the questions in the GRE. All right, so the GRE quantitative reasoning measure has four types of questions. The first type of question here will be the quantitative comparison question. That's the first type of question. You have the multiple choice where you're asked to select one answer only. And then you have multiple choice questions where you're asked to select one or more answers. So you will have different answers, maybe one, maybe two will be correct here. And then you have finally the fourth type of question you have is the numeric entry question. Here you're given a box, and then you're asked to fill it in. We're going to go in depth and see what, what the question looks like, all right? So each question either appears independently as a discrete question, meaning it's going to be only one question here, and then it's going to be your question, and then you're asked, you're asked to provide an answer. Or you could also get it as part of a data interpretation set. And when we talk about data interpretation set, we mean tables, graphs uh, are other displays of data. So you might find a data table and then you asked to you asked from this table answer a few questions here. So they could be quantitative comparison questions. You could be asked to select one answer or you could be asked to select multiple answers here. So you will either receive it as one, you will either receive it as one question or you will receive it as multiple questions where you have to answer something to do with a table or something to do with a graph. You are provided with a graph and then you have to answer questions from this graph. All right, so let's go and see what each question looks like independently. All right, so for the quantitative comparison questions, let's start with those ones. The here you're asked, you're given two types of, quant you're given two quantities. You're given quantity A here, and then you're given quantity B. This one you're asked to determine, you are asked to compare these two, and then you have to determine if quantity A is greater, or quantity B is greater if the two quantities are equal or the relationship cannot be determined. So this is going to be option A for you, option B, option C, option D. So you can only select one of these options. So you will find it's quantity A, 
and then you have quantity B. So for an example, let's do a very simple example. You've given this is five, and then this is maybe 2.5 here. You ask compare these two, which one would be your answer here? Of obviously, quantity A is greater, so you would select quantity A. So you'll select option A here. But if you're given something like quantity A, and then you're given quantity B here, and then you're given this is X, and then this is Y, but you're not given you're not given any other context to this question, then probably you would have to go with D here because you cannot determine the relationship here because we don't have any, any extra information. So sometimes you'll find here that quantity B could be greater. So maybe quantity B could be nine and then quantity A is two or something like that, or the quantities could be equal here. So depending on the relationship, you'll do your calculation and then the relationship that you get here is what you're going to pick as your answer. Let's look at an actual question that came here. You are watching Success with Bob Moiti Show, presented to you by Upstech America. Upstech America is a consulting company that helps immigrants find amazing higher education and job opportunities in the tech industry in the United States. You can find our programs by going to www.upstechamerica.com. Upstech America, we wake you up to the unlimited potential. So this is an actual question from the GRE. You are given quantity A is 54% of 360, and then quantity B is 150 here. So what is 54% of 360? So you'll have to find 54% of 360. You're asked to compare quantity A, which is 54% of 360, and quantity B, which is 150 here. So you'll come and do your calculations, maybe say 54 over 100 times 360 here, which would give you 5.4 times 36, 36 times 54 here, 5.4, it's going to give you 1,944, one decimal place here. So it's going to be equal to 294.4. So quantity A is obviously greater here. So you're going to select quantity A as your answer option here. So that is what, this question will look like. If you found maybe that this was 150, for example, and this was 150, you would have selected quantity C here, meaning the quantities are equal. But because we found it's 194.4, meaning this is greater, then you go with quantity A. All right? Let's look at the next type of question that you'll get. Multiple choice questions, select one answer choice. So this is what we, are mo we used to most of the exams that we've done before. So you're, you're given multiple choice questions, and then you'll be asked to select only one here, only one. This is the important part, only one here from a list of five choices. So you'll have A, B, C, D, E, and then you're asked to select a single choice. So this is an actual example. If 5X plus 32 is equals to 4 minus 2X, what is the value of X? So you'll come and do your calculation here. 5X plus 32 is equals to 4 minus 2X. So take 2x to this side, take 32 to this side, you get 5x plus 2x is equals to 4 minus 32 here. This will give you 7x is equals to what is 32 minus 4? You get this is 8, 28, negative because 32 is greater. I'm going to divide by 7, divide by 7 here, by 7, by 7, 1. I'm going to give you x is equals to negative 4. All right, so finding x is equals to negative four here, come and select a is equals to negative four, as simple as that. So you only ask to select one answer choice, which is the correct answer choice here, and you found your answer choice. All right, so only select, you're asked to select the question, you give you a prompt to select a single answer choice, select a single answer choice, all right? Next question here, almost similar, but a little bit different, you are asked to select one or more. So one answer could be correct or multiple answers could be correct. Example, there are, there are these multiple choice questions ask you to select one or more, right? So one or more answer choices from a list of choices, they're going to give you, they're going to give you whatever, whatever uh, number of choices, could be five, could be six, and then you're asked to select. So sometimes it's important to note that the questions may or may not specify the number of choices. Sometimes it's going to ask you to select 
two, it's going to ask you to select three, it's going to ask you to select four, or it could ask you to select all that are correct. This could be one, could be two, could be three. So you always have to be careful for the answer. For example, here, which of the following integers, integers are multiples of both two and three? Indicate all such integers, indicate all such integers. So multiples of two and three. So here we have eight. Eight is not is not a multiple of three here. It's, 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 it's not a multiple of three because you can't multiply three with anything to get eight. All right, so that removes the first one. We have nine. You can't multiply anything with two to get a nine here. So it's not an integer. So you cannot multiply any integer. You could multiply a fraction, but you can't multiply any integer to get a nine, all right? Then let's look at C, 12, all right? So 12, you could do four times three, you could do two times six. So 12 is an option here. Let's look at 18. For 18, you could do two times nine, you could do three times six. So 18, 18 is an integer that is a multiple of both two and three. Then 21 here, 21 is an odd number. So you will, it will not be a, a multiple of two or three here. It could be a multiple of three, so it's seven and three, but there is no number that is an integer that you can multiply with two to get it. So you're being asked of both, both two and three. So 21 is not an answer choice for us. Let's look at 36 here. Two, two times 18 gets you 36. Three times 12 gets you 36. So 36 is a multiple of both two and three. So we have three answer choices here, correct? 12, 18. This is just an example of a question that you may get where you ask to select one or more answer choices. Sometimes they're going to ask you, indicate three such integers. So for that, you know you're looking for three correct answers. So always be on the lookout for this prompt here. This prompt is what is going to tell you what is required by the question. For the next type of question, we're going to be looking at data interpretation questions. So data interpretation questions, they're just going to be those four, four types of questions that you've seen. It's going to be the same, the same types of question, but now in forms of a table. It's going to be in form of a table here. So let's look. Data interpretation questions are grouped together and refer to the same table, graph, or other data representation. So you, there could be different types of data representation here. So these questions ask you to interpret and analyze the given data. The table questions may be given as multiple choice, both types or numeric entry, also be quantitative uh, comparison here. So those four questions that you've seen here is all the same thing. There will be no new type of question here. So you could be asked to select this figure, for example, figure eight here. This figure eight will have, let's look here, question one to three. So this figure eight has three questions. So question one, they could ask you to select select three answers, right? And then for question two, select one answer. So it's going to be the same way, the same way that we've spoken about multiple choices and single answer. That's the same thing you're going to apply here. Question three might be a numeric entry here, numeric entry. So you have to usually be very careful with these data interpretation questions because they could take a long time to do their calculations. So make sure you give adequate times to this type of question. Make sure that you're really well prepared for these types of questions because the three questions you have to come keep coming back to the table and then going back to your question. So make sure you give these types of questions adequate time to calculate. That is the end of our presentation for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. For the next video on quant, we are going to be going over what are some of the tips and tricks to be able to handle these questions how what are some of the questions that may come, different topics of questions, and what you could do to make sure that you score the highest score possible in your GRE exam. So I hope we'll be meeting in the next one. Have a good time. Bye-bye.